You're listening to a message from Gateway Church Geelong. We hope it blesses you. For more information about Gateway, visit gc.org.au. Morning, everyone. So today I'm continuing on with our summer series, as you just heard, about God's immeasurably more for our lives, for our families and for this church. And I think it's such an exciting thing to start off 2024, hearing about the good that God wants to do in our lives this year, that he does have more for each one of us and for this church. Do you believe it this morning? Okay, so let's look at our scripture, which is from Ephesians 3, 20 to 21. And it says this, Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. And here are some more words to describe his infinitely more. Far more abundant, beyond all measure, immeasurably more, exceedingly abundantly. These are such words that can fill us with faith for the God that has more for each one of us. His more can't be measured. His more can't be weighed. And in fact, at times it just can't even be explained It's beyond what we can think because it is God and his work in our lives, his power, his love, and his immeasurably more. How does the message say it? God can do anything, you know, far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. He does it not by pushing us around, thank God for that, but by working within us, his spirit deeply and gently within us. You know, what can start out as a normal day, us going about our everyday routines can suddenly change. Now, I'm not the best cook in the world, hence the reason you will never see me on MasterChef. But when Murray rings me and says, do you want to go out for dinner tonight? And I say to him, oh no, it's okay, honey, just come home. I'll prepare a three-course meal for us to enjoy after my very, very long day at work. Said me, never. I love this type of interruption. Yes, please, let's go out for dinner. And we see this in the Bible. God bringing his suddenlies and his interruptions to people's lives. And as we read about their experiences, we can be encouraged by the immeasurably more that God has in their lives. You know, Paul and Silas were in jail when suddenly there was an earthquake and their chains came off. The doors were opened and they were free. And not only that, but the jailer and all his household were saved. The immeasurably more of the Holy Spirit. David was just a teenager and he was out in the fields looking after the sheep and the next minute he is being anointed king, king over Israel, the immeasurably more of the Lord. We can read about these experiences in the Bible and think, what about us, Lord? Where's the more in our lives? Have you ever experienced an interruption from the Holy Spirit? You've been going about your day And then it suddenly changes and God reveals his measure more to you. It could be while driving and you've been thinking about a situation that you've been going through and suddenly a thought comes to mind or a word comes to mind and you know it's not from you because it brings a different perspective. It enables you to bring a different understanding to the situation. It is the immeasurably more of the Holy Spirit. It could be that you're praying for a friend who's, who's unwell and they get healed. It's the immeasurably more of the Holy Ghost. It could be that you ask a family member to come to church and they say yes and they come and receive salvation. It is the immeasurably more. It could be while you're having a conversation with a friend And the presence of God suddenly fills the room and the atmosphere changes and you bring a prophetic word of encouragement into their life and into their situation. It is 
the immeasurably more. It could be just while you're reading the Bible and suddenly the light bulb goes on and you realize that God is revealing to you the immeasurably more that he has for your life. It could be while sitting in a youth group meeting and the youth pastor gives you a word and speaks to you what God has, how he sees you and what God's got in store for your life. You know, when I was in youth about five years ago, I'm sure of it, I remember my youth pastor giving me a word. And do you know, to this day, I still remember it and declare it over my life because I know it was the word from the Holy Ghost speaking into me of who I am and how he sees me. The immeasurably more, the immeasurably more, he has it for you today. That's what happened to Gideon in the Bible. What started out as a normal day changed into Gideon having an encounter with God and hearing about the immeasurably more that God had for his life. When we first read about Gideon in Judges 6, he is hiding in a wine press, threshing wheat. And in Judges 6.11 it says this, the second half of the scripture, Gideon, son of Joash, was threshing wheat at the bottom of a wine press to hide the grain from the Midianites. Was using a wine press the normal way to process wheat? The answer would be no. Back in that day, they processed wheat by using a threshing floor where they would throw the grain up into the air and the wind would come and take the chaff away so all you are left with was the grain that you could eat, which I'm sure was gluten-free. So for them to be able to do this process, they needed to have a wide open space and they needed to have lots of wind and usually this would occur on top of a hill. That was the best place to be able to do this. Whereas wine presses were used for pressing grapes and were found in the ground, usually deep in a hole. So what had been going on for us to find Gideon in this way, in hiding? For seven years, due to their disobedience, the children of Israel had been suffering under the hands of their enemy, the Midianites. And because of this, they had been forced from their homes and they were now hiding in places in mountains and caves around them. And every time they tried to grow a crop, the Midianites would come and destroy all their crops and take their livestock. This left the children of Israel in a pretty desperate situation. There was not a lot of food and obviously not proper housing. And this would explain why Gideon was in a wine press, a crowded and inconvenient place to be threshing wheat. He is afraid and sometimes fear makes us do strange things like this. But he's doing this because he doesn't want the grain to be stolen by the Midianites. He needs it for his family. The past seven years had not been easy for all of them, including him. It had been a very stressful time. You know, the Lord didn't rescue the Israelites from Egypt, only for them to be, end up hiding from their enemies in mountain and caves and wine presses. So what happens? God comes to Gideon. And Judges 6.11 says, The angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the great tree, which belonged to Joash of the clan of Abiezer. Gideon, son of Joash, was threshing wheat at the bottom of a wine press to hide the grain from the Midianites. What does the angel of the Lord do? He comes and sits down under a tree. If we were observing this scene, we would think, oh, here's someone just relaxing under the shade of a tree, maybe chilling, taking it easy. But he is here to meet Gideon in just a normal everyday way there were no flashing lights there was no ticket tape parade there was no special news bulletin it was just him sitting under a tree and I love this because it wasn't about the loud noise it wasn't about the clutter it was just about him meeting Gideon in just a very normal way he is here to meet Gideon the creator of the universe, coming and having a conversation with us that changes our lives, 
it changes our perspective, it changes our attitudes and it changes our mindsets. Nearby Gideon is hiding, hiding and as he works, he, won't be discovered. he hopes he won't be discovered. But he is about to be discovered, but not in the way that I'm sure he ever, ever anticipated for that day. Gideon is about to give, be given an extraordinary message and task. It was right at this time when Gideon was at a low point and feeling overwhelmed that God's voice broke through and spoke the words that would raise Gideon up out of the wine press. And Judges 6.12, it says this, The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty hero, the Lord is with you, O mighty man of valour or strength. He doesn't ask Gideon, well, you know, what are you doing here? He doesn't question his work environment. He just outright states who Gideon is. He is a man of strength. He is a man whom God is with and wants to use. This was news to Gideon. In fact, if there was one thing that Gideon did not think he was at that particular moment, was a mighty warrior. He at the moment felt anything but brave, strong or heroic. What was the more Gideon wanted to see? He says to the angel in verse 13, Where are the miracles our ancestors told us about? They said, The Lord brought us up out of Egypt. Gideon wanted to see deliverance. He wanted to see a miracle. He wanted to see the provision in that situation. But he just wasn't expecting God to use him. Judges 6, 14 to 16 says this, Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. But Lord Gideon replied, How can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh, and I am the least in my entire family. The Lord said to him, I will be with you, and you will destroy the Midianites as if you were fighting against one man. What an amazing plan God had for Gideon. God wasn't, God wasn't looking at Gideon's position in his family or his status within the children of Israel. And he didn't want Gideon to focus on that either. He wanted Gideon to focus on him, his God, because he is the God of the immeasurably more. And he is the God of miracles. What did God say to Gideon? He called him a mighty man of strength and that he, the God of the more, would be with him as he defeated the Midianites. God wanted Gideon to know that he was with him and that he could be so much more. With God's strength, Gideon could do what God was asking him to do. In God's eyes, Gideon was already a mighty warrior. Is there something God is saying to you or asking you to, to do today? You may feel like Gideon, hiding, so to speak, and not sure what to do, trying to do things for your family, but needing a breakthrough. You may have had something that has happened that has left you in a place that God never intended you to be in. It may feel like you're trying to do something or navigate a situation, but using the wrong t tools. Or it could be just life circumstances have left you feeling this way. God wants you to know that he sees you today and that he is with you. That is his truth for you today. And he calls you a mighty man and a mighty woman of God. And God is saying it's time to deal with this situation. You can defeat this fear you can defeat this disappointment or whatever you are facing. You can bring the victory because God is with you and working through you, which will impact not only your own life, but your family and this church and this city. He wants you to know that he is with you this morning. His voice, his truth wants to draw you out so that you can see who you are. Is that what we need today? 
at the start of 2024. Is that what we are needing today? His voice to come and say to us, you are a mighty man of God. You are a mighty woman of God. I have you. I have you in the palm of my hand. Yes, this situation has been going on, but I still am with you. Don't let the situation ever dictate to you that I am not with you because I am with you. For seven years, Gideon had been struggling, but God was always with him. There are situations that we go through that sometimes feel like, is this ever going to change? But I'm here to encourage you that it can change. All it takes is that one act from God to bring change and breakthrough and fear to be broken in the name of Jesus. Because it's who He is. He is the God of the more. And He is with you today. And He is calling you a mighty man of God and a mighty woman of God. We need to hear your voice this morning, mighty God. We need to hear your truth this morning, mighty God. We want to come out of those situations for 2024 with our head held high impacting our lives, our families, and this church and this city for the glory of God. For some of us, that may mean coming out of hiding or coming out of your comfort zone so that we can pursue the measure of more that God has for us. If you are feeling stuck and not sure what to do, I would encourage you that God is with you and he wants to reveal his more to you today. It may mean choosing to see yourself differently and the way God sees you. I don't know what you see when you look at yourself, but I know that just like Gideon, God sees who you are and, and who you can be. He has, sees his loving intentions towards you. God sees who is shaping you to be by the power of the Holy Spirit. He wants you to see yourself the way he sees you a son or daughter of God, a mighty man and a mighty woman of God, more than a conqueror. He wants you to see the immeasurably more through his power working in your life. I'm sure we have all had moments of not wanting to be seen. It might be because we know it might be mean doing some work on ourselves or making some hard decisions. But could it be your time to allow God's power to work through you in a greater measure. God provided Gideon with lots of assurance at this time and he can do the same for you. When God shares with us the more, we at times need the reassurance. Did I hear you right? Can you say it again, Lord, in five different languages over the next five days? Please say it again, Lord. Did I hear you correctly? And I know there have been times when I've needed that in my life. God, did you really say it? Please just say it again. You know what? You're not alone if you think that way or have said that, had those conversations with God. And it's not like he looks at you and goes, oh, come on, can you get it yet? <laughs> he just looks at you as a mighty warrior. He just looks at you as a mighty man and woman of God. Aren't you glad for that today? That he looks at you that way. Because we all have times of doubt. We all have times of frustration. We all have times on this journey saying, God, where are you? I need you right now. I need them all right now. And God is wanting you to know that he is with you. He surrounds you with his presence. He surrounds you with his protection. He surrounds you with his peace. He surrounds you with his joy. He surrounds you with his love because it's who he is. Never doubt it. Please never doubt he is with you today. He is with you individually. He is with your family. He sees what's going on and he says, I've got you. Trust me. Trust me in this moment. I've got you. You may be down here, but right now, my words, my truth are pulling you out of that situation to give you a different perspective and to see it in a different way so for the outcome to come into your life and your family's life, the breakthrough in the name of Jesus. He's got you today. He sees you and he is with you. You know, God had a very different strategy for what he wanted to do with Gideon's life in defeating the Midianites. 
You know, at first when Gideon called all the men together to fight with him, he had 32,000 men. But the Lord says to him in Judges 7, 2 to 3, You have too many warriors with you. If I, if I let all of you fight the Midianites, the Israelites will boast to me that they have them, saved themselves by their own strength. Therefore tell the people, whoever is timid or afraid may leave the mountain and go home. So out of 32,000 people, 22,000 of them went home, leaving only 10,000 who were willing to fight. Who were these mighty warriors? <laughs> Gideon might have been thinking, okay, 10,000 is not too bad. We should be able to defeat the enemy with this. But God says to him that this is still too many men. He tells Gideon what to do. And after this, he is left with only 300 men. And in Judges 7, 7, it says this, The Lord told Gideon, With these 300 men, I will rescue you and give you victory over the Midianites. Send all the others home. What a time to believe God's word over your life that you are a mighty warrior. With 300 men on your side, God, I am believing right now that you have called me and that I am your mighty warrior because there's only 300 of us. But I know that you're with me and that you've got this. And as you read on in Judges, you'll see the amazing defeat of the enemy as, as Gideon chose to trust and follow God in this time. You know, he uses a trumpet and a torch to defeat the enemy. Whoever has used that strategy before? I'm not sure. But Gideon and his men saw victory that day. Gideon knew it was because of God. God used him and was with him and it was all because of God and all glory went to God for delivering the children of Israel from the Midianites. Thank goodness Gideon came out of hiding. Thank goodness he chose to see the more. Thank God, goodness he realised that God was with him and who God had called him to be. He has the more for you today. If I just can ask everyone to stand. Has God been speaking to you about his more for your life? Is there an area in your life that you know you need a victory in? Is there an area in your life that you need a breakthrough or deliverance in? for yourself or maybe your family. Yes, it may take courage to step out, come out of hiding and come out of your comfort zone. But that's why God said clearly to Gideon, mighty man of God. And that is what he is clearly saying you today, mighty man and mighty woman of God. Just like with Gideon, God is speaking to you, his truth to bring you out of your situation. God wants you to know that He is with you to bring victory into your situation, to bring victory to your health, to bring victory to your family. And two things I want us to do this morning. I'm just asking them to put Ephesians 3.20 back up on the screens. And I want us as a church to say this together to declare this over our lives and our families and this church in this city because I know God has the more. Do you believe me this morning? I want you to say this with, with conviction and boldness in your heart because this is the truth of God's words. Now all glory to God who is able through His mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to Him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Do you believe it this morning? Do you believe it this morning? For yourself, for your family and for this church. I just want you to close your eyes in His presence. And if there is something here that you're saying, God, I know that you've been speaking to me. Maybe it might be, Lord, I don't really see myself as a mighty man or a mighty woman of God, I just ask that you give me that revelation today. It might be that you're needing His truth just to help you up out of your situation. 
It might be something that you didn't even do on purpose or it might be something that's just happened because of life. But His truth is here today to lift you up out of that situation. And He wants you to know that you're with Him. And I just want to pray over each person in this place today. Lord God, we just come to You. And we just ask for Your presence to settle on every heart and every mind in this place. Your presence that brings protection. Your presence that brings truth. Your presence that brings healing. Those, that balm of your anointing. Just to settle our thoughts. Just to settle our emotions. Lord God, we look to you. You are the, the God of the more. And this morning, we just open our hearts to you and say, God, speak to us. Speak to us. Reveal your truth. You are a mighty man. You are a mighty woman of God. Lord God, your presence. Lord God, your presence. to bring healing and truth, to bring us up out of those situations, to see ourselves how you see us this morning. In the name of Jesus. You know, this morning, would be remiss of me not to give this opportunity whether you're watching online or in the room today you know just like Gideon was called by God to save the people of his time Jesus was sent to save all people for all time and I God loved his creation his humanity so much that he sent Jesus walked the earth performed miracles, went to the cross, was buried and rose again on the third day for the forgiveness of our sins. Amen. So that we could be set free. Romans 10, 13 says, anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I want to encourage you today, if you don't know Jesus personally, but you want to receive forgiveness, you want to receive that fresh new life, essentially coming out of hiding and into everything that God's got for you. I want to invite you to pray a prayer after me this morning, if if that's you. Church, can you join me in praying this prayer as well? Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you that you sent Jesus. I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth that you raised him on the third day. I repent of my sin. I surrender my life to you. From this day on, I choose to follow your will and not my ways. In Jesus' name, amen. We pray that that message was a blessing to you. If you made a decision to follow Jesus, first of all, congratulations. We think that that is incredible. And secondly, if you go to gc.org.au forward slash first steps, our team has put together some resources as well as there's some information there for how you can get in contact with one of our pastors because we'd love to encourage you and connect you into the life of the church.